Hello everyone, Andrew here. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to continue in our series today on how to make some classic drinks. Today we're going to make a Wisconsin Old Fashioned and I'm going to let you know the difference between a traditional Old Fashioned and a Wisconsin Old Fashioned and where the Wisconsin Old Fashioned came from. If it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that like button for us, and in the comments down below, please put what you'd like to see us, any, any drinks you'd like to see us make. Um, as I'd mentioned, I'd been a bar manager for a number of years and made a lot of different drinks and always had fun doing this, so I thought I'd share some of my knowledge of, of making drinks. Now, people are asking, what is a Wisconsin Old Fashioned versus a regular Old Fashioned? So when I first started bartending, I was in Wisconsin, and Every time someone ordered an Old Fashioned, it was always a brandy Old Fashioned. And they would have a brandy Old Fashioned sweet, sour, or press. And so I just thought everybody drank brandy Old Fashions. Some people then, when they would be coming up from Illinois, they would ask for a whiskey Old Fashioned. So and then I started asking people, do you want a brandy Old Fashioned or a whiskey Old Fashioned? And then when I moved to Illinois, I was managing a bar just outside of Chicago. And when someone ordered an Old Fashioned, and I asked them if they wanted brandy or whiskey, they looked at me like I was crazy. They're like, what are you talking about brandy? It's always whiskey. I said, well, I'm from Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, we make brandy old fashions. What's interesting is, um, Corbell, there's a backstory to why Wisconsin started to be very popular with the making a brandy old fashioned versus a traditional uh, whiskey old fashioned. An interesting fact about Corbell, Corbell is actually made in California but they ship more of their brandy to Wisconsin than any other state. In fact, twice as much to Wisconsin as any other state. For example, in 2019, I believe it was, they made 275,000 cases of Corbell and 150,000 of those cases were shipped to Wisconsin. So Wisconsin's a very heavy, strong brandy drinking state. And that's where the idea for an old fashioned made with brandy versus made with whiskey came from. So we're going to start with making the basic ingredients for a Wisconsin Old Fashioned. We're going to start with some Corbel. We're going to use some bitters. We're going to use some sugar. We're going to muddle some cherries and orange in there. And we're going to make a sweet. Now the only difference between sweet, press, and sour is if someone asks for a brandy Old Fashioned sweet, you use lemon lime soda. If they ask for a sour, you use bar, bar sour. And if they ask for what's called press, you would use half sweet and half tonic, half just soda water, was what they call it. The traditional old fashioned was made just with the brandy, the sugar, and the um, bitters, and then they just put that over ice. And that's a traditional old fashioned. In Wisconsin, like I said, we made our own old fashioned. So, what the difference, the biggest difference in Wisconsin, what we do is we start with a little bit of sugar, start with about a about a teaspoon probably of sugar so you can use a sugar cube as well but a teaspoon works really well one thing you're going to need for this is a muddler I'm also going to talk about at the end of the video my basic bar setup bar setup kit you're going to need to make yourself some professional drinks but you're going to need a muddler and what I do for mine is I start with a little sugar in the bottom then I take about maybe four, three or four dashes of the bitters. And this gives you a really good contrast in flavor. So I added probably about four dashes there of the bitters. And I'm going to go just a little bit more because they didn't come out too well. Now the other difference that they do in Wisconsin is most of the time they'll muddle these together with a little bit of uh, just a, a dash of water or a dash of sour. But what we do in Wisconsin is we actually and uh, yeah, it's a rainy day here in Wisconsin, thunder and lightning all around me, so it's actually a good time to just make a drink. Okay. So again, you take an orange, take yourself an orange slice. I like to just take a couple of orange slices, put them right in there. Yeah, we got some real good thunder going on around us here. Take yourself a couple of cherries. Now some people, if they like it real sweet, They'll actually put a little bit of cherry juice right in there too. Just a dash of cherry juice. This gives you just a really nice flavor. Then what you're going to do, I would normally just pour this how much I want to put in mine. But for the sake of this recipe, I'm actually going to use a jigger. This is something they call a jigger. Now a brandy old fashioned calls for two ounces of brandy. So we're just going to go one, 
you what I call an extra kiss. Give that old fashioned an extra kiss. So what we've done there is we've added the brandy, the sugar, the cherry, bitters, and the orange. And then what we're going to do, this is called muddling. And we're going to muddle this all together. And what you really want to do is get that sugar to dissolve into the brandy. And you want to go ahead and take all of your fruit flavors and mix them in. Now, there's some people that say you shouldn't muddle all your juices in there, that you're just ruining your drink. But again, this is a Wisconsin old fashioned, and we like to do things different here in Wisconsin. So, you want to actually muddle that peel as well because that's going to release some of the flavors from that orange peel. This is going to be a really nice, refreshing drink. Although it's a fairly strong drink, the traditional old fashioned, again, was just the alcohol. They didn't muddle the fruit in there, it was just the alcohol, some sugar, and the uh, bitters. That was the traditional one. Then they would just add some ice. If you're doing the traditional, you'd use the larger ice cubes or the larger ice balls and put it in there and just sip it that way. But again, because this is a Wisconsin old fashioned, we're going to top it with some ice. Okay. Then what we're going to do to make it sweet, we're just going to add, top it off with some Sprite. Then we're going to mix the whole thing together with our mixing spoon here. We're just going to leave all of that delicious fruit right there in the bottom. Now there's really no need to garnish. You could garnish this with another cherry or another orange. But because you have that there in the bottom, there's really no need to garnish that. And there you have a Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned Sweet. Mm. That is good, tasty, Wisconsin Old Fashioned. I hope you like this recipe. If you did, hey, give us a thumbs up. If you're new here, please subscribe for more videos that we'll be doing on more of our favorite cocktails. Mm. I'm going to enjoy that cocktail and also comment down below on what you'd like to see. Thank you for watching. We definitely appreciate it. Okay, and that is the classic cocktail, a Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned Sweet. A lot of people ask me what you need for a basic bar setup as well. And this is a kit that you're able to get on Amazon, and I'm going to put a link to this down below. So if someone wanted to order this, they definitely could. Uh, because this is going to have all your basic necessities for your bar. What you really want to make sure you have, and we saw me use this in the video just now, you want to have a jigger. This jigger here has one ounce at the top and a half ounce in the bottom, because that's your most common mix, is your one ounce and then your, your half ounce on there. You also saw me use the muddler. Now the muddler is going to be for anything where you're going to muddle the flavors together. You would use this like I showed in the uh, Wisconsin Old Fashioned. You would also use this if you were making a mojito. You would use this to muddle the, the lime together in the mojito. And I think that's going to be one of our next cocktails. So stay tuned for that one. So that's a muddler there. You're going to want a good quality shaker. So if you're making anything like you saw I made a uh, original margarita on the rocks. Anything you're going to make on the rocks you're going to want to shake. If you're going to be making a uh, martini, martini should always be shaken, not stirred, as James Bond said. This one has a shaker ball on the bottom of it here, and this is going to allow you to strain any of your drinks that you have. You're going to shake that and then strain it over the rocks or straight up. This is going to be used also for straining into a glass. Also, very important that you have a wine key so you for opening your wine, so that came in this little kit as well. This one came with an ice tong, also came with um, a bottle stopper for if you open a wine, bottle of wine and if you don't drink the whole thing, which I can't imagine that happening, but it does happen for some people, I guess. Um, also with some stoppers, if you want to have that right on your alcohol, you can put that right on there, make it a little easier to pour. Came with the ice tongs, came with a stirring spoon, you saw me stir this up here, so it came with a stirring spoon. Also a measuring spoon, I use that for the uh, sugar. This was also another, you could use this to grab your garnishes with or to stir your drink with. And this one also came with some stainless steel straws in the carrier. This thing was, um, I don't know, it was under $35. So you can go on Amazon. I'll send you a link on do, doing that. If you do that, we appreciate it because we get a small affiliate. It helps us make more videos for you. So again, if you got some good information from us here, Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'm going to go ahead and go.
go ahead and get out of this uh, thunderstorm and enjoy a cocktail. Cheers, everybody.